Hi, I have Arthrix here, doing some more redstone on my uh, my redstone world on Minecraft. And I'm gonna show, today I'm going to show you something called a multiplexer, and it's basically something where you have uh, a certain amount of inputs, and then you have uh, a number of outputs that is greater than the amount of inputs that you have. So let me show you. So you might have four inputs, and we're going to use binary for this. If you don't know binary, then it's pretty easy to pick up, just type in binary and there's a wiki page on it. If you can't bother to learn it, you there's converters you can find where you just type in the normal number and then it shows you what the binary would be for it. That's what I do if I just can't be asked to work it out. Um, so here, we're going to build a multiplexer. So we've got four inputs. So imagine this is a binary number going from right to left. So obviously that would be one, that would be two, and then if they if they were both on, that would be three, and then four, etc. And then say we with four inputs, with four digits, the maximum you can get in binary is fifteen. And we're not going to go up to that. We're, we're um, just to demonstrate the concept. I'm just going to go up to literally four. Um. All right. So one, two, three, four. And what you want to do? You want to space them out like I am here. Just like this. Okay. And then you want to put repeaters here and then redstone and you want to alternate between the two. Like so. This is to keep the signal constant and it just, it's just the way you do it. Right. So what you have to do is you do you can you don't have to use binary when you're making these, you can program them however you want. Make them however you want. So if you want it so that you need to turn on the number one or just this lever to activate a certain input, then you put a torch on top. And then the ones that you don't want to be required to be activated, you put a torch on the side. You then put a block on top of every single torch. And then these ones that are side on, you put a torch here. Then cap it off at the top. I'm just using gold blocks just because I like gold. But, um, yeah. And then you want to put some redstone along the top. And then a torch at the end. This is merely to convey the signal. Right. And then you want to put like a, a block here to receive the signal. Right. So now this is output one yeah, from the registry. So if we were to like activate one as a binary number, which would be this, we would flick this lever, which in turn would cause output 1 to be on, as you can see here. So if we turn it off, then this output's off. Then for 2, obviously 2 is would be just there, just this row here. So you would have a torch on top, torch on the side, like so. And then you would just repeat the process from before. Like that. And we put a torch on the side of the uh, blocks that are on top of the side torches. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much once you've done one, the way you build them is exactly the same. The only thing you change is the configuration of the torches, which determine what levers you have to pull. So I'm talking about if the torch is on the top or on the side. So we've programmed that to be output two. So now if I do two in binary, this uh, output should be active. So if I go to here, then yeah, lo and behold, two's on. I always found a good way to see is to do that. Because sometimes it's a bit annoying to see the little dust or particle effect come off of it. And then three is obviously both of them. And, then there's, and this can go, you can make this as big as you want. There's no limit. The only thing is, the greater the amount of inputs you have, so that's the levers, You, what I found before is you sometimes have to put repeaters on these top bits so the signal actually reaches the output. Um, otherwise you can get some weird readings. Um, yeah. These are very, very simple to make really. Right, so, hang on. Right. So, alright, oh, it's because I haven't put the rest on. It's 
So once I do that, it will turn this torch off, so this output's off. So then if I do 3 in binary, is that, I think you can, well actually no, that, that's sort of complicated. And so, and then 4 finally is just that, because 4 is 0, 0, 1. No, zero one zero zero. So zero one zero zero. Think of the the torches on the side as zeros, and then the torches on the top of the box as one, which one obviously denotes on or true, and then um, zero obviously is off or on the side of the block for the torches. And this thing is a very neat compact and clever way to organize inputs and outputs. You can have these going t tail to tail onto each other. So if you, you could do some uh, funky shenanigans where you have uh, the output of one multiplexer going into the input of another one. I don't know what you could use that for, but yeah, you could do that. These can be used in redstone computers as like processing units. They can also be used as combination logs, right? I've I've got one over here that I built earlier. Li this is literally one I made earlier. And see here, this is just two multiplexers, one here and one here, and then I've got for to, the, the combination for this one is the number three in binary, and the combination for this one is number four in binary, and basically. You can use piston setups to make it automatically reconfigurable, but I prefer to just do it manually. So these inputs will not do anything, but this one will. Obviously, this would all be hidden behind a wall, so you wouldn't see it. So if you, if you want to change the number needed to unlock it, you literally just reroute the redstone to go to one of these. So at the moment, this door's shut because there's no signal here. And then I've got a uh, an inverter on not gate, causing it to be closed. So if we go over to here and do three in binary here, we can see that it's activated this signal here, which has turned that off, therefore turning that piston off. And then if we turn this one to the correct configuration, which is four, then we, there we go, the door is open, walk through. Yeah, um, this is very, there are other ways to make combination locks, quicker ways and less excessive ways, I think it would be a good way to put it. However, I think that these are very easily reconfigurable, they're easy to understand, and also they just look cleaner than um, previous designs where you kind of just use and um, and gates and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you could easily set this up so you could have a piston that cuts off every signal apart from the one that you want to be the one that activates the door. I could do that, but this is purely just demonstrating the concept, so I don't really have any need for that. Anyway, I've been Vertrix. This has been a, a quick just look at some of the stuff I've been doing. Um, on multiplexes, what can be useful. So, um, I'll see you next time.